Hello everybody, it's the Last Raider. We are back in Star Wars this time. Because apparently Matt Martin, uh, who's this dude on here, he's he's apparently, I don't really know. I just found out about this dude the other day. Apparently he's running parts of Star Wars and I'm already pissed off at, the, at this little pencil neck geek. Uh, so apparently he puts out this whole thing, this big spiel about the Star Wars canon and everything because... Let's be frank, the last, the, the, the Star Wars, the last Jedi, when they mentioned Palpatine was a clone, I was like, wait a minute, Luke Skywalker fought a second Palpatine in one of the books after he went to the dark side and then he turned back and then you realize, wow, they just butchered all of the canon and, and I'll, I'll get to that here in a minute. There's a point I want to make on that, but right now let's look at what he says. He says, referring to Star Wars canon, it's all fake anyway, so you can choose to accept whatever you want as part of the story. Okay. Okay. Ray's parents aborted her. She was never born. Ben is Jason Solo. Luke Skywalker's still a badass. And in the and in the sequel trilogy, Han and Luke are the, the movie starts with Han Solo and Luke Skywalker running from the new empire. Okay? And they're just out there being, you know, they're out there having a guy's day. They got a little drunk. They pissed off the new empire a bit. And they're trying, the new empire is trying to kill them. <laughs> okay. Chew is the only one sober in this point. All right. Luke is drunk using the force. Han's making quips the whole time. They're, they're sucking down fermented juice. They're sucking down some fermented alien fruit or something like that. <laughs> this is how the new sequel should start. Anyway, uh, this, this is dumb because you're, the point of canon is so that your story stays straight. Because if you begin to deviate from the stories a bit, if you deviate from canon and you deviate too much, it starts to ruin the immersion of the, the actual story. People get immersed, immersed in it. Um, you look at most stories that work very well. A lot of times these stories, they really work because you set up a set of rules, and that's what canon does. Canon sets up a set of rules and a history that you can usually go back and, and pick on. It's kind of like how when you do YouTube, you create playlists so that you have videos, so like someone jumps in the middle of a playlist. One, one of my favorite playlists is the uh, Scrubby's, uh, is Scrubby, who does, you know, he does, um, he, he kind of recants stuff from Reddit in the first person, but then he personally gets, he personally becomes the victim of an actual psycho Karen. And it's like, I got right in the middle of that shit, and I was like, this is nuts, and he goes, and by the way, I put this into a playlist so you can see all this other history with me and this Karen. So I had to go back through the playlist and start watching Karen videos as we were going forward. It creates this sort of um, universe that has your, your fans coming back for more. There's Star Wars books I haven't even freaking read yet in my lifetime. I've not even got a chance to read them because most of them, uh, I, I can't find them. Is the problem. I don't have any. That's how rich the Star Wars culture is. And for you to sit up here and say, oh, it's all fake anyway. Your you're own, let's, I mean, you come in and say it's all fake. To the people that's sitting there, no, it's not. It's their entertainment, okay? It's a world that they really wish would exist. That's like going along and telling um, Michelangelo, the Mount, or was it Michelangelo? Or Leonardo da Vinci? I can't remember. It's like going in and telling a sculptor that, uh, or a painter that the Mona Lisa is not real. All right, it's just, it's just paint on a board. It's not real. But let's, but I mean, the reason that the reason why you're saying this is is quite simple because the people that are running Star Wars are not fans. You want to know the difference between these fake Star Wars geeks, like Matt Martin here, and real Star Wars geeks. Look at the Mandalorian and compare it to any of the sequel trilogy that's out there. Any of the sequel, any of the movies have come out after the prequel trilogy. It is good Star Wars. It's amazing Star Wars. It's a story that you can get emotionally invested in. 
The problem you have with the new trilogies, and let's be frank, the new trilogy, and this is this is my opinion on it, the new trilogy is the complete breakdown of Star Wars, stripping it down past the foundation. I mean, you're, you're stripping Star Wars down past the foundation so you can rebuild the foundation how you want it. This is this is a, a fanfic of how the original trilogy, it's also an insult to the original trilogy, the sequel trilogy is, but it's also a rewriting of the original trilogy. All right? Yeah, we're, we're going to have all your characters, but we're going to make them look really stupid. And then we're going to push our version, our bastardized version of Star Wars, which is the sequel trilogies. And now with the High Republic... They're now going out. Uh, the High Republic is probably going to be a complete destruction of the prequel trilogies. I'm sorry, prequel Star Wars fans. Y'all just better get ready for it. Okay? I'm not I'm not the one that's making this happen. I'm just the messenger. I'm the warning that's coming. Okay? Seen it in comic books. They're gonna, there's nothing. And to all those of you that are, you know, Legends canon... Get ready because they're going to be pulling more of Legends Ken out. They did it at the end of the uh, the Last Jedi with the with the clone Palpatine, if you recall, and the salt the the technical Skywalker J. Uh, what was it? Kylo Ren, Ben Solo was like Luke Skywalker fell to the dark side and then comes back to the light side, but then even he's not able to beat. Palpatine. I mean, fuck it. That that whole thing with clone Palpatine and and uh, Ben Solo going to the dark side and coming back was that that is just completely ripped out of can ripped out of Legends canon. They're gonna go through all the Legends canon. There will not be one thing safe from it. And they will rip it out and completely bastardize it. Look at Marvel. Look at DC. Look at Valiant. Look at all these comic book companies out there that have gone woke. And they're they're suffering right now. Okay? Tony Stark is now a thieving black chick. Miss Marvel is now a girl that stretches but can't seem to make herself look, you know, sexy, which... Honestly, you have the ability to manipulate your body as a chick. You would think plastic surgery. You, you, have, you have the power of instant plastic surgery with Miss Marvel, and she doesn't use it for that. Okay? she's got she's And she's not lesbian. She's actually hetero. So you would think in a, in a girl's mind, it's, you know, if I made myself look better, I could puff up my chest from an A cup to a C cup, give myself a little bit of booty, I mean, you still have superpowers. You've got the ability to do it. You might as well. <laughs> I mean, fuck all. You might as well have done it. Um, that's probably why Mystique, most of the time when you see her as a woman, she's usually a hot chick. But anyway, back, back to this. They are, they're going to go in there just like they've done with Thor, just like they've done with Captain America. Captain America, they really... Captain America is like a pinnacle hero, a symbol of, you know what a hero should be. And they turned Captain America into it. And they gave Captain America the very same treatment they gave Luke Skywalker, which was, we're going to break him down into a symbol, almost the exact opposite of what he was. To give you an example, Captain America, America, who helped beat the Nazis, America, who was American troops who liberated Ostwich. Captain America was Captain Nazi. Yes, they made him a Nazi and stated that he was always a Nazi, that there was never a point in time where he wasn't a Nazi. And all those times where he was Captain America helping out the U.S. and you know being pro-America, that was just Captain America doing his one thing. He was constantly screwing America and ruining it at the, at the whole time. Ba- basically, basically, America's not great. And it's all and it's being ruined because the, the your symbolism on the inside. What would you think America stand for is actually really bad. Same thing with Luke Skywalker. You tell me that that's not Luke Skywalker when they got done. All right. So all y'all Star Wars fans, y'all just might as well get ready because the canon they're going for the let you wanted the Legends canon used. Oh, they're going to use it. All right. 
They are not, but they're not going to release it until they've sanitized, sterilized, and reshaped it in their image. You'll get all your Legends movies. They'll be full of blue-haired, mental haircut, butch lesbians with mocha skin, which I have no problems with. But here's the thing. Most of your Legends canon has already got all the diversity you want. These fuckwits don't believe in that diversity. They're not going to they're not going to hold the simplistic diversity that's already there. They're going to try and over diversify it to the point of parody. Like I said, you look at you compare the Mandalorian to every single Star Wars movie that's been put. Even Rogue One does not stand up to the Mandalorian. And I know some Rogue One fans are going to be mad at me about that, but even Rogue One doesn't stand up to the Mandalorian. This is why canon is important. This is why you don't deviate from the product. And this is also why you don't hire SJWs into positions of influence in your company. Because these types of people don't care. You want to know... And, and, I t- and people have asked me a lot of times. I've had some people ask me, how is it? How is it? That we have all this technology, all these special effects, and Lord of the Rings came out almost 10 to 15 years before the sequel trilogy, and the sequel trilogy is such shit, and the Lord of the Rings holds up, even today. And I tell them the reason why. Because if you go back in and you look through the entire making of the film. I had the special edition which showed all the makings, how they did everything. The guys that they hired to make their fake movie Chainmail had read Lord of the Rings religiously and The Hobbit. They 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 said they they put it up there with the they they read their books religiously. They studied it. They were fans, not just any fans. Lord of the Rings staff was comprised of regular fans and super fans. Ian McKellen was running around, in fact, educating people on the proper context. I mean, let's 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 be frank here. Okay, um, I forgot his name. Played Count Dooku for a minute there. It's not Christopher Nolan. I don't think so. I cannot believe I forgot his name because he's one of my more favorite actors. But anyway, the two, him and Ian McKellen were running around there. You know, two sides of the coin. You know, Sauron and Gandalf were running around Lord of the Rings, educating and telling everyone because some of the staff were from the United States and had to be, and they were educating them on the old English because it is very important that this is done this way because this is what fans realize. Ian McKellen actually went up to the guy that played Sam and told him it's very important that Sam hugs him because this shows a high degree level of friendship, all right? They they had so many people were fans. They were all fans of it. Nobody was sitting out there saying, well, you know, we, we had to go out and read, I had to go out and read the books afterward. They had all read the books. They were all fans. And that's the difference. The reason The Mandalorian works and everything else either kind of works or is a complete bomb is because the people that are working on the stuff that kind of works and is a complete bomb are fake Star Wars fans. They've only heard about it. They've seen the lightsabers. They've seen lightsaber stuff on YouTube. They're like, wow, what are these geeks doing? And then they realize, oh, we can get a job doing this. We can push propaganda with this. John Favreau and uh, Filoni, what they do when they did The Mandalorian. Now we found out that the father of Star Wars is actually part of the creative team. They went and got the, they went and got, they went to the source. They didn't get some refined bullshit that's been hammered out. By the way, something I'd like to tell people, fandoms, you know, resources, sometimes when when you're doing stuff, you got to remember a lot of things are like steel. The more that you heat and refine steel, a lot of times if you overheat it and you keep heating it, melt, in other words, melt it down, bring it back up, melt it down, bring it back up, melt it down, reforge it, you end up harming the carbon content. You actually cook the carbon content out of it. So eventually what you're cooking there eventually gets, it it becomes mild steel at some point to a, to a certain point. And sometimes you got to go back to the source. You got to take it back to source. You got to mix it back in with some other stuff and make, sometimes you got to crucible and put some carbon back into it. You got to go back to the source. And that's what, that's what John Favreau and, and, Filoni did. They went back to the source. 
Fuck, my freaking screen went out. <laughs> but anyway, tell me what you guys think about that. I mean, uh, this, this whole tweet here, it's all fake anyway, so you can choose to accept whatever part, uh, whatever you want as part of the story. Because this is my, this is my thing. No, no, no. Uh, if I if I'm considering it, Ray got aborted. That's my that is my canon. Ray was aborted. Her mom looked at her, said, "Nope, this baby is from Palpatine. It's got to go." Anyway, uh, also also, Finn ended up being a Force user. He got trained by Luke Skywalker. Got taught how to shoot and fly by Han Solo. And he's actually the he's actually the hero of the original sequel of the of the sequel trilogy that came out. Anyway, I am the Last Raider. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Keep your head on the swivel. Stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video.